Now we all have our own bike maintenance routines, but how can you go the extra mile to make your bike faster, run more smoothly, and most importantly, look amazing? Well, here are some of our next level bike maintenance tips. Instead of wrapping your bar tape, starting at the end of the drops and finishing on the tops, if you wrap it the other way and start on the tops first, you don't need to use the tape because you can just wrap the bar tape under itself, securing it, hold it tight and make sure that you uh, wrap it very tightly all the way along and then finish it at the drop with the normal bar bung method. And then you'll end up with this really nice, clean look. Very pro. Now here you can see my very neat and tidy brake cable on my Pinarello. And it's got a little ferrule on the end to protect the cable and stop it getting frayed. Now ferrules can come off just with normal wear and tear and riding. And if they do, your cable can become frayed, making it very difficult to put one back on the end to protect it. And without one on there, the cable can continue to just get more and more frayed and then you might have to replace it. But if your brake cable is relatively new and you don't want to replace it, there's a solution. Using a soldering iron and some flux or solder, you can tidy up the end of frayed cables, fix them, and it's a great little hack this. To do it, hold on the soldering iron onto the end of the cable and just heat it up and then apply in some of the solder. Now, admittedly, my soldering skills aren't the best. This is the first time I've used a soldering iron since I was 13 years old, but hopefully you get the idea. If you want to get the most out of your chain, then we'd recommend waxing it. Waxing your chain rather than using a standard lubricant has a number of advantages. It often will pick up less dirt and grime and stay cleaner for longer and more efficient. But also waxing it reduces friction in the chain if done properly. And this can mean that you're saving a few precious watts, meaning you go ever so slightly faster for the same effort. If you want to know how it's done, well, we've done a video showing you how you can do it. It basically involves firstly stripping the chain and getting it as clean as possible. An ultrasonic bath can come in good handy here. And then you want to treat the chain with the wax itself and let it penetrate all of the links. This should be good for around 300 miles or so, or around three weeks riding. And while on the subject of your drivetrain, there's other things you can do to optimize it as well and save some watts. So you can go for ceramic bearings throughout, so in your bottom bracket and also in your hub and your jockey wheel bearings as well. And you can go for oversized jockey wheels or pulley wheel systems. And the idea behind these is that they allow the chain to go through less tight angles and this reduces friction in the chain. So if you think about the plates of the chain being my hands, then if they only have to move against each other that much, there's less friction compared to a tighter angle where they have to move against each other that much. And in doing this can typically save just three to four watts or so. It's not much, so if you are going to do it, make sure before you do that, you've invested in some lower rolling resistance tires and some latex inner tubes, as this will elicit a bigger performance gain and it'll cost significantly less. Don't underestimate giving your bike a nice good polish. It won't just make your bike look cleaner and shinier, it can also help protect it from dirt and corrosive things like salt on the road as they'll be less able to stick to it as you ride through them. Also, there's a rumor that applying a silicon spray to the surface of your bike can make it faster too. A lot of pro teams have been spraying the rider's bikes with silicon spray before time trials. I don't know if this actually works. Maybe it's something we should do a video on and test. Anyway, I'll give it a go. Disc brakes are still relatively new on road bikes, meaning that us roadies have still got a lot to learn and a bit of catching up to do when it comes to learning how to properly maintain them. I'm mainly talking about myself. 
Now, one of the main things you need to do is to avoid getting degreaser or oil on the rotors because doing so will contaminate them. It can decrease braking performance, increase pad wear, and most annoyingly of all, cause a loud banshee-like squeal whenever you apply the brakes. And I, for one, don't want to be responsible for the heart attacks that old ladies trying to cross the road will have when they hear it. The solution to this is once you've cleaned your disc brake rotors, apply a specific disc brake cleaning product to the rotor. Allow that to evaporate off and then wipe off any remaining residue or excess with a cloth. This should keep your rotors nice and clean. Interesting science fun fact for you, the main ingredient in disc brake cleaner appears to be a compound called methyl ethyl ketone, which I know from my chemistry nerd days is just a really good solvent at dissolving fats, oils and greases, basically removing contaminants from your disc brake rotors and it's really volatile too. Bit of nerdy science, you didn't need to know that, but now you do. Anyway, they were some of our next level bike maintenance tips, so I hope you found them useful and if you did then please give us a like and a follow. But what did we miss? Let us know in the comments any of your next level bike maintenance tips and then we'll probably include them in a future video. But until then, I'll see you later.